We have with us none other than uh, Mr. Sandeep Khosla of Khosla Associates, Bengaluru. So let's have a huge round of applause and energetic round of applause to welcome our next speaker on the stage, Sri Sandeep Khosla. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Thank you, uh, Shraddha, and uh, to the team at the Festival of Architecture and Interior Design. Um, for inviting me to share some of our ideas and work in this uh, wonderful forum. That's my partner Amrish and myself and the design team at Khosla Associates. That was this Diwali. We all get together as a studio quite often to celebrate festivals, events, um, and just uh, celebrate life. Louis Kahn quite famously asked a brick what it wanted to be, and the brick emoted that it wanted to be an arch. When Kahn told the brick that a concrete lintel would be more efficient and less expensive, the brick still emoted that it wanted to be an arch. This has stayed with me for the past two decades of our practice, and we have always stood at a site and asked the question, what building does the site want to see? What is the happiness quotient and the comfort of the spaces we are about to build? And how should we design spaces that have the capability of being loved? Our experience of architecture is more than what we see. It's what we hear, what we touch, what we smell, and it is part of our deepest dreams. It's the subliminal and visceral qualities of a space that make it emotive. It may be the gentle modulation and interplay of natural light on various surfaces, creating environments that are handcrafted and, tech and tactile, spaces that have the energy to uplift us because of their scale and proportion, spaces that create a feeling of memory and nostalgia, spaces that bring us closer to nature and connect us back to our primordial selves. So how do we experience emotion in our work? In a picturesque site located in the Western Ghats, perched on the backwaters of the Pavna Lake and surrounded by the Sayadri mountain ranges, we envisioned a house as a single level pavilion spatially divided into two primary zones, one for engagement with the view during the day and the other as a quiet retreat at night. The living spaces are extroverted and permeable, allowing nature to penetrate its envelope and the private spaces are introverted and protected. One of the challenges of the pavilion was to admit the right quality of natural light into its internal volumes. To this end, we created a series of north skylights to illuminate the internal spaces evenly and ethereally. The angular shapes of the skylights were inspired by the mountainscape that surrounded the site. It made sense to use the readily available black basalt stone, which was found on the site just five to six feet below ground. We used the stone as a random dry pack cladding along the entire extent of the exterior walls and on a few internal accent walls. There is a handcrafted and tactile quality to the house. The process of making is so evident in the final outcome. In the hand-troweled cement walls, the imperfections of the stone, the natural patina in the kota, in the mistakes of foam-shuttered concrete, in the grains of naturally oiled ply. There was an emotive connect to the land, the sky, 
and the lake, a rootedness and connectedness to the environment. The narrative of the architecture was seamlessly extended into the interiors. Accessories were all sourced from Maharashtra, brass and copper vessels from Nasik, and Bidri ware from Aurangabad. The primary objective of the house was to absorb the natural environment, to open itself up to the view, but at the same time remain inconspicuous and silent. So the house gently disappears as you descend the hill towards the water. The challenge in this project was to design and construct a 35,000 square feet kindergarten school within a six month period at an efficient cost of 1,200 rupees a square foot. We adopted a 35 foot by 20 foot classroom module stacked it horizontally and vertically like building blocks and added layers of intervention. Classrooms flank a single loaded corridor that wraps the perimeter of the central open to sky courtyard. Terracotta jalis act as a perforated skin, allowing the building to breathe and filtering the harsh western sun. We took two varieties of a ready-made terracotta block and combined them in playful ways, the combination creating interesting patterns on the interior spaces at different times of the day. The efficiencies of designing and constructing a building so rapidly had to be balanced with what we believed in, creating a warm and playful and welcoming environment for these young children that would be filled with cheer. What could have been a brutal space for such young kids was softened by the familiarity of color and the warmth of terracotta. Saturated color is a part of these kids' consciousness as they grow up, seeing it in our vernacular architecture, festivals, and textiles. We took inspiration from this and wrapped the entire perimeter of the courtyard in brightly colored and durable corrugated sheets. The courtyard became the soul of the school and various activities and learning spilt outside the classroom. The playground, school plays and music performances, and sometimes even the morning assembly take place in the courtyard. We didn't have the luxury of separate budgets for architecture and interiors. So the visual impact and comfort of the interior spaces are a direct result of the stripped down materials used architecturally and the play of light through them. This project was chiseled from an abandoned printing press in the landmark 1950s Art Deco inspired Indian Express building in Bangalore. We created a grand interior to evoke a bygone era using contextual influences, local material, and customization. As architects, we wanted to further the Art Deco character of this building by integrating a prominent arched colonnade into the existing fenestrations at street level. The colonnade painted in a deep red oxide color recalls the visual language of the High Court of Karnataka in the same, in the same precinct. The 20 foot high ceilings of the space were treated with a series of repetitive walls and rendered in a red oxide finish. Accent walls were cast in corrugated cement with a green oxide pigment. The flooring design was created with a bold an alternating striking linear pattern of local gray Sadar Ali stone and black Karappa stone. The 8,000 square foot of floor space was so large that we designed screens of ribbed timber and brass with organic cutouts to divide the space intelligently and to create intimate zones for dining. A series of lofty freestanding arches 
were devised to create visual movement and fluidity in the space while reinforcing its vault and arch vocabulary. The challenge of the space was to have the ability to transform with ease from a light-filled casual eatery by day to an elegant restaurant at night to a high-energy pulsating nightclub over the weekends. One of our intents with this space was to have Bangaloreans feel a connect to their city. Ours was an imagined interpretation of old Bangalore, aimed at evoking emotions of nostalgia. The cement oxides are a lost craft, and we were keen to revive them. The flooring is made of local gray granite upon which Bangalore is built. The custom designed chandeliers are an ode to the garden city and were inspired by the branches of trees bearing fruit. Our own project to house the architectural studios of Khosla Associates and the graphic design studios of TSK Design was quite challenging. The constraints of a tight plot of land had us think primarily in terms of maximizing efficiency while still maintaining the qualities of openness and light. We demolished our old studio that had housed us for almost two decades for a new build. Our motive was to thoughtfully cater to our studio's growing functional needs. And this became a thoroughly collaborative design process between the architects and the graphic designers. Our new space had to feel like an extension of home, bringing in warmth and comfort into the interior spaces. Architects and designers spent long hours at work, and we had to be concerned about their overall well-being. Bangalore still has the kind of temperate weather where we can limit air conditioning to a few months a year. And we wanted to capture enough fresh air and natural light into the studios so that we would not need a light bulb during the day. Spaces were carved into the building to foster creativity and promote collaboration, interaction, and chance encounters between the designers. An exterior two feet wraparound overhang shelters the windows from sun and rain on each level. We devised a system of wooden box jali screens to protect the openable windows. The pattern of the jali was derived from the whimsical dash dash dot series of terrazzo tiles that Tanya and I designed for Bharat flooring. The wooden jalis provide for daylight filtering during the day, allowing for cross ventilation and provide a layer of security to the building while provide, providing very playful patterns in the interior spaces during the day. The highlight feature is a lightweight steel and timber staircase, which runs like a vertical spine through the triple height volume of the studio the environmental graphics the environmental graphics that climb vertically along one of the staircase walls was conceived to amplify and celebrate the staircase making spaces for encounters a spot to have a conversation pause and continue with your manic day tanya and i have had a real fetish for the eames crow which brings back wonderful memories of our childhood in Calcutta, where curious crows perch on rambling telephone wires. Tanya imagined it flying through Indian landscapes, perching on a cow, pecking on a marigold. The materiality of the studio is textural while staying fairly monochromatic. There is a combination of brick walls and Kerala roofing tiles painted white form-finished concrete, screed concrete flooring, and patterned terrazzo. Pops of color in the environmental graphics, staircase and loose furniture add warmth to the pared-down shell. 
Our work in the studio is about constant collaboration and interaction, and we wanted to ensure maximum efficiency in our workflow while designing a building that was contextually and climatically sensitive to the Bangalore environment. How do we as designers reflect our own sense of style while still reflecting the diverse range of our clients' lives? How do we bring out our clients' personalities in, into their homes while still articulating their overall, our overall vision? Tucked away in a leafy bylane of the historic racecourse road in Coimbatore, this house was intended to reflect the personality and lifestyle of the homeowner couple, their two young children and dogs. Both successful in entrepreneurs, the husband runs a textile company for bed and bath linen, and his spouse runs a real estate company that constructs affordable concrete housing. A central feature of this house is a freestanding double height form finished concrete wall that divides the living and dining spaces. It culminates in a roof with strategically positioned skylights on either side. A cutout in the slab allows the skylights orienting east-west to capture the arc of the sun from morning to afternoon and bathe the wall with an ever-changing dance of natural light. In order to create a layer of meaning and context for our clients, we set out to create a large art installation out of 109 wooden shuttles used in handloom weaving. Although most textile companies have got completely mechanized over the years, our intent was to reflect the textile traditions of Coimbatore that our clients had grown up with. In a sweeping and sinuous gesture, the artwork climbs up the dining face of the concrete wall and can be viewed from different vantage points on both levels. The multiple shuttles were mounted on a brush brass base and strung with vibrant fuchsia colored thread. The artwork assumes a further dimensionality as the shuttles rise and dip with fluidity in a wave-like flow. The house tells a narrative about its owners and what they do. The spaces for the family are close and close friends are warm and interactive and reflect their casual lifestyle. The contextual references to concrete construction as well as Coimbatore as a textile hub adds a layer of rootedness and meaning to the house and the connect with nature is constant. Thank you.